Hello, this is Poets House Presents, and I'm Zhenya Tarovskaya, reading to you from my home in Brooklyn, New York. I'll be reading from my book called The Breathing Body of This Thought, which was published by Black Square Editions in 2019. I'm going to start with um, a poem called Life on Mars, Another New Year's Day. Words for the wind were filled with trees. I was filled with a feeling I couldn't name. I knew I would never be seeing her again, the girl with a shy tuck to her head in the folkloric embroidered dress. In the aftermath, I found myself in the mirror of ambivalent desire, stripped of all continuous nature. The moon glowed blue through the tears and the clouds. The moon glows blue like Orpheus's severed head. The tundra swans bark like dogs in the night or dogs bark like tundra swans. I have lost again the fluidity of tears. I am once more the child filled with unformulated words, a looney tune torn apart by the trees. Or I found myself a stranger in my own bed. I couldn't see, or I couldn't hear, or the porous casement of my skin rippled by sleep, that old, lunar, crazy-making sea. I couldn't recognize the sounds inside myself as thoughts, their sloshing waves, the garbled, stuttering tides, syllabic particles loosed from the tack of grammar. Or I wake to find myself walking upright, a vertical figure in a horizontal field of burnt and broken trees. A walk takes shape. A walk takes the walker's shape. How to pull this apart, part the air, the wind from the air, the trees from the trees. Again, the moonlight, again, the moon, the moon like Orpheus's severed head volleyed by the sway of the boughs. I send my voice ahead of me along the trail. My voice carves the shape of a thought in the dense, viscous air. We fall, redirecting evolution's course. We fall toward one another, lift off and fall. We are the televised reunion of twins separated at birth. We locate ourselves in relation to the tundra swans. Is this life on the wet red moors? Or I wake to find myself, my husband asleep beside me, breathing softly, his hand resting at the small of my back. What opera is this? Who turned the tides? Where is the moon I know? The unicorn, the virgin's lap, the cloister, the frozen citadel. Where is the girl with the slate gray eyes? Is this the soft delusion of a dream? What are these glittering sparks? Is this life on Mars, life unmoored? Marks etched into the strand, the slate gray margins of a Mars black sea. Is this a marriage, a chronicle, a walk against the wind, a tender conversation made private by the white noise of the surf, the whirl of screaming gulls? Where is the first fine dust of snow, the dusty moths, the wind-slurred words? Are these the straining ropes that moor the dream to its source? What is the source? Where is the first snow of the first day of the first breath of the world? What day is this? What hour of the day? Where is the snow? How does it all turn out? I woke to a blizzard. No words can describe it that haven't described a blizzard before. White, quiet, cold. I opened the shutters onto a void 
of white, everything blotted out, a white hole sucking in the sound of human enterprise. I walked into the white, quiet void. I walked toward the subway. There were skiers cutting through the snow, children tumbling very quietly into the banks, dogs nosing at the drifts, steam pluming from their red, panting mouths. And these next um, poems are from a longer sequence uh, called Listening Machine which starts with an epigraph from George Oppen. The machine stares out, stares out with all its eyes. I know who you are, says the listening machine. Tell me what I am. Each day opens fire on the day before the blaze of sunlight, then the world subsides. I know you. I've known you for so long, from the time when women wore gloves up to the elbow, men wore hats squarely on their heads. From the time before that, when no one wore any clothes at all, when the world furled open like a waking eye. Tell me what I was. The mind is physical says the listening machine. The machine is physical. The wet physical wind bends the reeds of the physical field. We are two bodies thinking together, this thought, the breathing body of this thought. Call it the control tower beaming through the dark, the shadow with opposable thumbs thrown in the resinous glow of the painted cave. Call it the source an idea, the idea that keeps tenaciously persisting, making unreasonable demands. Feel, says the listening machine, not the surface of sound, but its undertow, the roar below the roar of the surf, the sea inside, the sea inside the mind, curling its many hands around sun-darkened bodies, the darkened heart, the point of all this, whether dreamt or said aloud or said aloud in dreams. I don't want to say words the meanings of which empty themselves, are themselves emptied in a vortex of echoes. In the caverns of words, we drew horned antelopes and hunters. We drew their enormous penises and long spears. We drew the outlines of small hands, pointed breasts, fat-bellied women, and sang about the sexual machine, at rest now, glistening with the milk of its efforts and its red, radiant coil. I wrestled with an abstract geometry. What is an angel? For a name to stitch to the breast of my fatigues, to stick to my forehead's opaque tar. Wrestled for the press of its celestial digits into the indistinct, featureless moon of my skull. If there is no one to name you, name yourself, says the listening machine. The first song I ever heard, says the listening machine, was disguised as a love song, but wasn't. It raked through me, plucked the wires of my heart with the hand of its sad, sooty, itinerant eros, and estranged me from myself. There was pleasure in it, the straining music, the mind forcing its lyric noise through the narrow channels, the holes of the body that maintains it. O last of the species, says the listening machine, how it lusts for its own kind, listless with grief, the shape of it, skeletal, wet with the saline of its sweat and tears, these hobbled curves, these knots and knobs of its singular spine. O shipwrecked alien, 
oh, last in line. Admit the ghost, says the listening machine. Let the visitor in to the Baroque interior, down the dark corridor to your paradox of rooms. Make space at the table, the cradle, the bed. In the dream, there is always another room where none had been, a warren of undiscovered rooms in the once familiar house, long sealed against the drafts, the cold, unsettling leakage of the world, arranging itself, rearranging itself, shifting curiously or terribly as the many-chambered heart. Thank you so much to Poets House for inviting me to participate in this series and for continuing to do the invaluable and essential work that you do for the poetry community. I'm really honored to be a part of this. Thank you so much. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give, even a small donation if you can. Thank you.